and welcome to the second episode of Nephon Plays Backstage Pass. Uh, this is actually taking place in the same day. I just figured I had some more time. I ate my ramen. It was good. It was spicy. We made our own spice stuff. It was yummy. All right, we're gonna load the game up. Um, where we left off, she was like second day. People, stuff happened. Her dad got um, sick, and now here we are, Thursday. Sunlight streams through my windows as I roll out of bed. The pale blue sky outside the windows hints at one of the last warm days of summer. I take a quick shower before heading to class, but it's hard to relax. I'm completely preoccupied with thoughts of my dad, work, and school. I float through the day, trying hard to concentrate, but my mind keeps drifting. It's been a whole day, and I still haven't heard anything about dad. If I don't hear anything by lunch, I'll call mom myself. Thankfully, I get a text during my third class. A few students around me giggle, my phone buzzes, but the professor doesn't notice. I furtively pull my phone out and glance at the text. Dad is stable right now. We love you. Thank goodness. Was there something you wanted to share with the class? Professor Kobold has stopped his lecture and the entire class is looking at me. My mind blinks out. Um. I count slowly and try to breathe in and out with each count. Why is everyone still staring? You're welcome to text or chat with your friends, but don't do it here. Anyone who shows up to class should be all here. If you're not interested in being here, no one says you have to come. My breathing is finally slowed to an acceptable rate. I swallow and nod quickly. Sorry, sir. Understood. There, oh, the professor returns to his lecture, but I can still feel people staring at me. I can't believe he heard me from that distance. Maybe that hitman thing wasn't so far off after all. Relief at knowing that my dad's well outweighs my embarrassment, but I'm still mortified that the entire class came to a halt because of me. In front of me, a girl passes a note to her friend. We don't have to come to class, score. Her friend nods and draws a smiley face on the note. My phone buzzes with another text right as class ends. Hey, Sean. John called, says I need to show up early for the show tonight. So I'm gonna be, I'm going on ahead. I'll see you there. The concert hall is a fairly short bus ride from the campus. So I grab my, ba my makeup case and head out. As I step off the bus, I can see that people are already lining up. Wow, has Adam really gotten this popular in less than a year? I still remember his first performance at a coffee shop that I forgot he was even still going to be there. I move past the crowd and approach one of the smaller doors on the side, but it's blocked by a burly man in a security guard jacket that's one size too small for him. I strongly suspect that the jacket was the largest option available. No entry. You'll have to go line up in the front. Rude. Oh, I'm a part of the crew. The crew's already all inside setting up. No one is allowed in through here. No, well, I mean, I'm Adam's makeup artist. The guard rolls his, eye, rolls his eyes and smiles at me patronizingly. Well, you can go see Adam once the front door's open, okay? Nearby, the people lining up have started staring curiously. What's she doing? I think she's trying to sneak in. I'm not lying. If you don't let me in... Don't make me use force. The guard draws himself up to the full height. And before I know it, I've already shrunk away from him. Our conflict has attracted an even larger group of spectators. One girl jabs her friend in the ribs. Get your phone and record this. It's hilarious. I'm <sighs> totally posting the CU tune. My heart tightens and I suddenly find it hard to breathe. My brain begins to race as soon as I realize what's happening. I have to get out of here before things get worse. I take a halting step away from the guards, but a firm hand rests on my back, on my shoulder. It's all right, she's in. Oh, hey, John's actually younger than I thought he was. John! John drapes his arm over my shoulder, pulling me toward his chest affectionately. This girl's Adam's makeup artist. She's on the list. His eyes twinkle and he gives me an approving nod. The security guard looks disappointed. I wonder if he was looking forward to throwing me out. I give the guard a small, apologetic smile, but he doesn't make eye contact. Sorry about that, Mr. Brandon. You know how it is. That I do, and we're mighty great for your strength. 
John gives him a quick salute. John pats on my shoulder. So, shall we head inside? I'm sure Adam's waiting for you. Yeah. The security guards, guard steps aside to let us two in. Thanks. I turn off. I turn to offer John my thanks, but his expression has darkened. Why didn't you call? I gave you my mobile number for a reason. Oh, right. I figured he gave it to me out of politeness more than anything else. I'm sorry, I didn't want to bother you. Well, that's not true at all. Uh, yes, it is. His face tightens for a moment. Did I say something wrong? Sean, do you know what bothers me? Um... Not having a makeup artist bothers me. Getting a ring on the phone? Not so much. Ah, what just happened? Sean, Damn. do you... Not having a make... I didn't have a choice! That guard! The guard was doing his job. What about you? You looked ready to turn tail and hide when a simple call would have set everything right. I feel tears welling up in my eyes, but I blink them back. This is ridiculous. I shouldn't be crying over something like this. My breathing is getting shallower. The words I want to say stick in my throat, but I finally managed to speak. I, I'm kind of shy about... That's not shyness, it's selfishness. You're uncomfortable doing something, so instead of pushing through, you hide behind your own insecurity. His voice is cold. He doesn't even sound angry, just tired. I'm not the one who chose you, Adam did. And you were about to let him down. At that moment of, at the moment of mention, bleh, at the mention of Adam's name, I suddenly feel my temper flare up. Shut up! I step in front of him and spin around to block his way. John eyes me with a mixture of disappointment and weariness. I can feel the tears heating up in my eyes again, but John either doesn't notice or doesn't what do you care. Want, John? Should I coddle you and tell you it's okay to run away? I'm not your nanny. I want you to shut up. I clench my fist, holding myself back from the punch I so dearly want to place in his face. John sighs and places his hand in his pocket. He looks resigned as if he's given up on me. Suit yourself. He walks past me without even making eye contact. You know what? That's really dumb to say. Like, if you have a manager or someone, you probably shouldn't tell them to shut up. It just doesn't seem like a good idea. John and I haven't traded many words before. This is probably the longest conversation we've had. This is the only conversation we've had now that I think about it, and I already hate him. After a few steps, John stops to stare at the bright lights in the ceiling. He turns his head slightly and rolls his eyes in my direction. Adam's down there, by the way. Try not to be late. He turns and walks down the hall without bothering to wait for a response. I relax my fists and take a deep breath, trying to subdue my anger. As I watch John walk away, I can feel my fingers curling up tight into a fist again. I turn on my heel and stalk toward Adam's dressing area. I slam my makeup case into the ground with a frustrated grunt. Whoa. Ugh. Adam takes a small step back as soon as he sees my face. What happened? I swallow hard and attempt to smile. Sorry, the security guard wouldn't let me in. And then? John let me in. I grit my teeth as I say his name. Is that all? Adam searches my face carefully. I quickly wipe away a stray tear still hanging in the corner of my eye. If only he were clean enough to spit upon. There, now that's all. That bad, huh? There was a big crowd out front, and the security guard looked like he wanted to send me to jail. I nearly had a panic attack. Does John know about you and crowds? I shake my head. I don't want him pitying me, but then he had to come and save me anyway, and I almost cried. I'm so stupid. Don't say that. You're the smartest person I know. Thanks, but that doesn't change what happened. I've been worrying about Dad all day and trying not to. Add to that trying to figure out finances, and I guess this just kind of pushed me over the line. Of all things, I pull out my makeup case and open it with a sigh. We'd better get you ready. I'm late enough as it is. Adam nods and sits down. He knows better than to try to push the issue. As I wipe Adam's face clean, I can tell he still wants to ask me something. Uh, yes? So, about your dad. 
Oh, yes. They still know what happened, but he's stable. My anger quickly dissolves at the thought of my father safe and alive. Adam's shoulders relax and he smiles. Good. It's been on my mind all day, you know. You don't have to worry about us. Your dad's a cool guy, and you're my best friend. Of course I'm gonna worry. Oh, what a sweet guy! I know, it's just... Adam groans and cuts me off. It's just nothing. I'm gonna worry about you whether you like it or not. How many years have we known each other? I'm gonna say at least four. I kind of lost count. Exactly, so none of this don't worry about me nonsense. He stands and brushes himself off. Anyway, it's go time. He gives me a thumbs up. Wish me luck. <laughs> like you need it. Adam waves and heads to the stage wing. I can hear the crowd of people chattering excitedly. The minute Adam steps onto the stage, they erupt into a cheer. I pull out a book from my bag. As much as I'd prefer to watch the show, I've got to study hard now and keep up my grades. That grant depends on it. I feel like my volume's really loud, so I'm just gonna... I'm gonna just turn down that just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Oh gosh. Oh golly gee. It's hard to pay attention to the reading, though. My mind is still swimming with thoughts about what John said. That's not shyness, that's selfishness. My muscles have tightened up again. I can't believe he managed to make me so angry in such a short amount of time. I run my fingers through my hair and pace back and forth. I know I shouldn't be so quick to pass judgment, but... Ugh, what am I even doing here? My question is swallowed by the pounding music and the cheers of the crowd. The music winds down and Adam jogs backstage, exuberant. Another good show? I brush aside my dismal thoughts and offer Adam an encouraging smile. You know it! He throws himself in his chair and moans. I'm so tired, though. Do I really have to go to school tomorrow? He rolls his head back and sighs. You're the one who said you could handle it. Well, you should have stopped me. Yeah, like I could do that. I give him a gentle tap on the head. How? Oh. He rubs the spot on his head sadly. You're gonna make me stupid if you keep hitting me on the head like that. I won't back a smile. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm already stupid. I didn't say a thing. You didn't have to. I can see it in your eyes. He smiles and leans towards me. I'm glad you're less worried. He pokes my forehead gently. The one thing that bothers me is like, there are certain things that I feel like you could easily say um, all together. You don't have to separate them up so much because it's like a run-on sentence for me almost, or like a fragmented sentence. It doesn't really work, you know? It doesn't work for me anyway. But I guess it's just the storytelling mode of You were starting like to get wrinkles. I quickly cover my forehead. I was not. You definitely were. Adam Eaton, you should know better than to tell a girl that she's getting wrinkles. I said you were getting wrinkles, not anymore. Uh, the principle still holds. No, I really don't think it does. Well. Are we heading back to campus or what? Adam snaps his fingers in mock impatience. You're wasting time, Sean. Fine, fine. I gathered my books and stashed them away. I didn't realize you were so worried about the time. You know me. I roll my eyes and he laughs. Come on, let's go back together. Adam drives me back to the dorm building and I head straight to my room. My laptop sits on my desk, orange LED blinking slowly. I tap the, I tap the touchpad and the screen light, lights up. An icon in the bottom of the screen informs me that I have new mail. It might be important. I guess I should check it. I stare at the email in shock. Is this some sort of joke? It's a job offer from someone named Lloyd Newton. I look up his name. Whoa! He's the producer and director for Double Agent? My parents love that show! Well, the name is legit, but I really hope this isn't some kind of elaborate joke. My cursor hovers over the delete button, but I hesitate. If this is real, it's a great opportunity. Hardly anyone knows who I am or what I do, or even the fact that I'm here. I guess this is real? 
I should say I can make it. Unread. Ooh, let's read it. Okay. From Lloyd N. MUA needed. Hi, Sean. I, my name is Lloyd Newton, and I'm a directing a test shoot tomorrow for a possible TV show to be filmed here. Unfortunately, the makeup artist we had has been called away by a family emergency, and I'm really hurting to find someone. Sorry for the late notice, but I heard you were a reliable girl, and I was hoping you'd be able to come in and help us out tomorrow. It would mean the world, and then some if you did. Loves loyal Lloyd. Ah! What a name. Oh, I like that we have an email thingy though. That's really cool. Let's just, yep. Can I reply? Um, I'll be there. Thank you for letting, thank you for thinking of me or don't reply yet. Mmm. Okay, let's reply. Bam. Okay. Log out. I did it. Ugh. Feels good. Well, on the bright side, it looks like I've got work. On the downside, it looks like I'm going to get four hours of sleep tonight. Man, I've only been in college for two days and I'm already planning to skip class. Oh, my high school teachers would weep if they see me now. I curl up under the covers of my bed. What's done is done. The best I can do now is get good gr- Yeah, what? What's done is done. The best I can do now is get a good night's sleep. All right, and just like that, we're on Friday. Um, Friday. Give me just one uno momento. Huh. Okay. Sorry about the overly long pause. I had to make up my mind if I wanted to like keep recording or like stop because it's the start of a new day. But since the recording was so short, I think I'm just gonna keep going. Plus, I'm ready to get. To get I'm ready to get to the good stuff. All right, here we go. My alarm goes off long before I want it to. With a moan, I force myself to sit up. Time for work. I get dressed and run down to the bus stop. The bus driver raises an eyebrow as I board. I flash my student ID and he nods. Half an hour later, I get off at the studio lot. Wow, this place is bigger than I thought it would be. Lloyd said to go to Studio C, but I have no idea where that is. Well, I guess I'll just walk around until I find it. I tug on the front door. It's unlocked. I open the door carefully and poke my head in. I can hear voices, but I don't know where they're coming from. I step inside and shut the door softly behind me. Uh, hello? Oh boy, even more doors. I hear voices coming from up ahead. Is that where I should be? I can hear more talking. Whoever it is sounds excited. Actually, it sounds like several excited people. I walk faster. Maybe I can catch up with them and ask them for directions. The voices are getting near. Just as I'm about to call out to them, someone grabs me from behind. What? Who are you? I feel a hand clamped firmly over my mouth as someone pulls me back into a dim hallway. Stay quiet and don't move. Who are you? My heart starts racing. Who is this? Some sort of stalker? Is he here to see one of the actors? Whoever it is, I can't say I like him. I try to pull away, but he holds me closer. I told you not to move. I clench my fist and give my attacker a firm jab in the stomach with my elbow. His body tightens up, but he doesn't let go. Please, don't move. Please? Before I can respond with another jab to the stomach, a group of girls strolls past us. Maybe he went to a different studio? One girl who looks to be the leader is scrolling faster, or scrolling furiously through a set of photos on a digital camera. I really thought I saw him go in here, though. Well, let's keep looking. The other girl's voice... The other girls voice their agreement, and they head off down the main hallway. 
As soon as they turn the corner, the hand on my mouth relaxes. Oh, oh, what just happened? Hello? Hello? Okay, that was weird. Oh, what's wrong with? I stopped mid sentence at the sight of a young man doubled over and clutching his stomach. Um. Oh. I didn't mean to hit him that hard, did I? He slowly straightens himself. He's taller than I expected. Hey, are you okay? Sorry about the, uh, you know. No, it's my fault. I'm the one who grabbed you. It was pretty rude of me to... His face turns bright red as he realizes the full weight of his actions. I'm so sorry. Those girls were chasing me, and then I panicked. And... His voice is barely audible now. Um, just don't do it again, I guess. Who were those people? I'm not sure. I'm supposed to be filming a commercial, but one of the crew members posted a photo of the studio online. A bunch of them figured out we were here, and I guess they wanted to see the shoots. He fiddles with a strand of hair and keeps a steady gaze on the ground. And then it looked like they wanted to talk to me, so I kind of ran away. Smooth. I'm usually not this bad. They just caught me by surprise. I didn't think anyone would want to talk to me. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't. You're a model, aren't you? How can you tell? Perfect skin, nice hair, good posture, and you're tall? Definitely a model. Oh, I see. You're really smart. Or I can just tell context clues. Ah. Not really. I just know what models look like. Anyway, my point is that having excited people wanting to talk to you is kind of what comes with the job, doesn't it? Maybe. The girls are scary. Whoa, is this guy 10 years old or something? Am I scary? Uh -huh. I'll take that as a yes. Anyway, I'll be out of your perfectly conditioned hair just as soon as you point me in the direction of Studio C. Oh, that's next door. He looks a lot happier now that the focus isn't on him anymore. Just take the main hallway out. It's the building right in front of you. Thanks. By the way, the name's Sean. Oh, um, Matthew. Well, thank you for the directions, Matthew. And good will and good luck with the uh the girls and stuff, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. I hurried down the hallway and over to Studio C. Sean! I was just about to come looking for you. The guy with Wait, the ponytail. You are Sean, right? A man comes rushing towards me and skids to a halt a few feet in front of me. Uh, yeah, um, sorry. I got a little bit lost. No, 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 it's fine. I'm just glad you're here. I'm the director and producer, Lloyd Newton. It's a pleasure to meet you. Lloyd shakes my hand enthusiastically. I'm not too late, am I? You're not late at all. I was just fretting that you were going to be carted off with those other girls. Oh, what girls? Security said a couple teenage girls tried to crash the filming of a commercial next door. What do you mean? You were literally just there. How do how does she not like oh what girls? Like you just ran into those girls, right? Like you saw them, you the guy Oh right. Anyway. I was worried that you were taken away with them. Oh yeah, I ran into them. No trouble, I hope. No trouble. If you don't count one very sketchy model. Great. Or skittish, skittish model. He wasn't sketchy, though he was sketchy. He was definitely sketchy. Lloyd turns and dashes off. Then let's get started. I hurry to keep up with Lloyd, but it's hard to match his pace. I have to speed up to a trot so I won't fall behind. So how much do you know about this project? Only that it's a test shot right now. It's not like he gave me much useful information aside from that. Right. Although we usually call it a pilot presentation. We basically spend one day putting together shots to show networks what the show would be like. If it's good enough, a network will pick it up and we'll get to make a series. Oh, that's actually really cool. We're tentatively calling it Cops and Robbers. Name subject to change. It's a crime drama. Lots of things blowing up. Yes, I love blowing things up. Oh, I see. I try to sound as enthusiastic as him, but my voice sounds flat. Not a fan of explosions? <laughs> I 
I don't watch TV very often. <laughs> it's probably better for you if you don't. I hear watching violent shows turns you into a criminal. I'm not sure how to respond. Uh, he's joking, right? Your job is to make sure all our actors look pretty. He leans towards me and whispers conspiratorially. No easy task, I assure you. Okay, he's definitely joking. The trailers are that way, and I'll see you on set. Lloyd gives me another energetic handshake. I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got. I've heard only great things about you. He bounds off towards the set, leaving me to navigate the trailers. Great things, huh? From whom? Well, I can worry about that later. The makeup trailer is fairly standard. I do a quick walkthrough to make sure I know the layout. Okay, this is actually looks pretty familiar. It's not too different from the other places I've worked. I allow myself a small sigh of relief. I can already feel my heart pounding. Or, I can already feel my pounding heart begin to slow down. This might not be so bad. I've worked as mom's assistant on several movies, but taking the lead is such a huge pressure. The door opens slowly, and a familiar looking woman with long brown tresses enters. It takes a moment for me to place her, but after a moment's scrutiny, I recognize her as Selena Haraway. She got into acting when she was just a kid and did a series of movies and TV shows, always playing the angelic and energetic child. My parents loved all of her stuff, and I remember wanting to be just like her when I was young. Now that I think about it, I haven't actually seen her in anything in a long time. Selena sizes me up quickly. Is this wardrobe? Uh, sorry, ma'am. Makeup. I'm Sean Goodman. Nice to meet you. You look rather young. Is this your first gig? Uh, not my first time working on set, but it's my first time being lead artist. Do you plan to make a career out of this? I don't know. It's what I want for now, at least. Selena approaches me swiftly and leans down to look into my eyes. Are you just doing this to pass the time until your big break? Uh, what? I'm not really sure what you mean. Are you planning to become an actress? Oh no, not at all. That sort of thing definitely isn't for me. Her smile doesn't look very happy. There's a hint of loneliness in her voice. Good for you. I stare at her, waiting for her to say anything else. Um, well, I should let you get to wardrobe. Of course. Selena turns and leaves me alone with my thoughts. Oh boy, I don't think she likes me. Or maybe it's more like she doesn't like anyone? I take a moment to lean against the counter and collect my thoughts. The reality of the job finally hits me. Lloyd Newton is really here. Selena Haraway is really here. Can I handle this right now? Selena returns and wordlessly seats herself in makeup chair. I flip on the lights and squint. The lights above the mirror are designed to match the lighting on the set. The switches marked on the panel turn on a series of bright fluorescent bulbs. That's pretty harsh lighting. What kind of scene are we filming? Something in a police station. Right. Cops and robbers. <laughs> I should have guessed. Are you the cop or the robber? Cop of the hard-hitting, tough nature. I can't help but give Selena's frame a skeptical look. She's no stick figure, but it's certainly not the build of someone in a physically demanding job. Selena notices my sideways glance. It's television, honey. You're pretty or you're comedic relief. No one cares about realism. Of course. I nod as quickly as I can. I didn't mean for her to notice, but I don't have a terribly convincing poker face. I'm not sure what else to say, so I focus on the work and try to not to think about, try not to think too hard about what she said. I finish my work and take a step back. All done. Selena inspects herself in the mirror. Thank you. She stands, stretches, and heads for the set. I follow behind her, trying not to get lost. I'm really cold. We weave our way through a collection of wooden panels and bright lights. 
Lloyd waves us over as soon as he sees us. Oh, Selena, my beautiful leading lady. He mimes a kiss on each of her cheeks, then points to a set build to look like the interior of a police station. The boys already put your marks down. His voice sounded really different there. Selena nods and quickly navigates her way through the fake police station. Not bad, Sean. Tough and beautiful. Aw, oh, yeah. I only accident what's already there. I think most of the credit goes to Miss Haraway. No, oh, modesty is for suckers. Next time, tell me how great you are. Lloyd leaps over a pile of wires and races toward one of the cameras without waiting for me to respond. I breathe a sigh of relief. He likes my work. That's the first hurdle cleared, at least. Lloyd makes a small motion with his hands, and the recording light above the studio door lights up. Quiet on the set. Rolling. Captain Roberts, scene eight, take one. And action! Selena strides across the set, stopping at the door at the end. She wraps her fingers around the handle, then casts an angry glance over her shoulder. Chief, he's out there killing people without worrying about protocol. We can't keep playing by the same rules. Reset, still rolling? Selena quickly returns to her mark. Action! Cops and robbers, scene eight, take two. Selena follows the same path. Chief, he's out there killing people without worrying about protocol. If you won't do anything about it, I will. If you won't do anything about it, I will. Without missing a beat, Selena recites Lloyd's improvised line back. Good, good. Reset, still rolling. Give me something different. Selena returns to her starting point and closes her eyes for a moment. Action! Cops and robbers, scene eight, take three. At the sound of Lloyd's voice, Selena's eyes snap open. She pulls a gun from her holster and follows the same path across the set. Don't try to stop me. She grabs the door handle and marches out without another word. Cut. Beautiful. Lloyd leans over the cameraman to check the footage. I rush over to Selena. Just going to touch you up. Selena closes her eyes obligingly and I add a light layer of powder to her face. All right, reset. We're going again. I scramble out of the camera's view as the rest of the crew gets ready to film again. The rest of the filming follows a similar route. Each scene is a shot m each scene is shot multiple times for several angles. Between takes, I touch up any of the makeup that needs to be fixed. Working on a TV show all day proves to be more tiring than I remembered. After what seems like a little more than a few hours, Lloyd announces that we're done. That's a wrap. I hope to see you all again soon. Everyone applauds politely, and the crew begins packing up. Well done, Sean. I knew I could count on you. I'm flattered, but I'm also completely exhausted. You look ready to collapse. Something like that. How do you manage? Caffeine, mostly. Oh, and good food. I just found this pho place downtown, and it's oh, amazing. Pho. The only place I've been that makes it better is Vietnam. I love pho. That good, huh? Lloyd gives me a cheerful thumbs up. That good. You should check it out sometime. I will. What is happening? Okay. I will when I'm more awake. Right. Good home and get some sleep. And good work today. Thank you. I pack up my makeup kit and head out to the front of the studio. Whoa. The sky outside is already completely dark. Did I really spend all day in here? A blast of chilly wind makes me sh makes a shiver race through my body. Cold? Sorry, my screen keeps turning black. I don't know if anyone can see it in the video, but it's very frustrating. All right, so we're all good. John appears behind me. I can't tell if he's angry or amused. 
Instantly, my muscles tighten. I turn away from him before he can see my face. What are you doing here? I speak slowly, trying to make my voice sound calm. It sounds more accusing than anything else. John curls a strand of his bangs around his finger and gazes at it idly. Lloyd's an old mate of mine. I was just popping by to see how filming went. Oh, it was him! I knew it was John! My mind connects the dots quickly. You're the one who gave him my contact info? I'd be lying if I said no. Why? I thought I was selfish and unreliable. You're the only makeup artist in the area I know, and it was rather an emergency. So I'm his last resort. Better than nothing, I guess. I pull my sweater tight around my shoulders and march towards the bus stop. Where are you going? Uh, my school. Why do you care? Do you need a lift? What? You're offering me a ride? It's cold out. You need a lift. I can provide one. It's no more complex than that. So, now you're a gentleman? John sighs. You'd prefer it otherwise. Should I go with him? Oh, okay, this is the way we start making your final decisions. I say that we accept his offer because it's cold and buses are not the most calming places. Yes. Yes. I really don't want to accept anything from John, but pract practicality wins out. The sooner I get back, the sooner I can sleep. Fine. Why not? Let's go. Well then, let's get you back, shall we? The ride back feels uncomfortably quiet. I hope work went well for you today. Don't be shy. Are you trying to aggravate me? No. He responds placidly. You know, I'm not good with people like you. You know, I'm not good with people like you are. I get scared when there are too many people around. If you think I'm good with people, I must be a better actor than I thought. You're not scared when you film, are you? I'm terrified. He almost looked hurt that I suggested anything else. Acting is about being vulnerable, about showing the most raw parts of yourself and hoping that people don't walk all over it. When I was first cast as Knight, I was certain that everyone would hate my performance. At that point in time, I was entirely unheard of. I spent hours pacing back and forth in my tiny flat, wondering if I even should have accepted the role in the first place. Oh, that's so cute! It was the chance to finally be known, or ruin my career entirely. Oh, I like this game so far. He's cute. I didn't even know he was an actor. Apparently I didn't read context clues or something. Who knows? But I thought everyone loved you as Knight. Everyone but me. Every time I watch it, I see things that make me cringe. There's a lot I would do differently now. Still, there's no sense in dwelling on the past. Onward and upward. That's right. I'm sure you did great. You haven't seen it. I'm afraid not. Sorry. No, no need to apologize. It's not a requirement to know me. I don't think it aired outside of the UK anyway. I've seen DVDs on sale around here. I'd like to check it out. Don't bother unless you like fantasy and Brits. You don't have to watch it on my account. You sound like you don't want me to see it. The character Knight is such a legendary hero, I'm rather eclipsed by him. I suppose that I'm trying to escape from him. After three seasons, it's difficult to get audiences to see me as anyone else. Hmm. Problems. His eyes grow distant, and for a moment, I see a hint of disappointment on his face. But the truth is, if I can't escape the image of a single character, then I'm not a good enough actor. No, don't say that! You're a great actor! I bet. But that's neither here nor there. This is your university, yes? Yeah? Uh, yeah, this is it. Thanks. I head straight to bed as soon as I get back to my dorm. Today was much more exhausting than I thought. The added surprise of seeing John was especially exhausting. He doesn't seem that mad at me, but I still get the feeling he looks down on me. Oh, I just want to forget about him. Thankfully, it's Friday night, so I get the luxury of sleeping in for once. I turn my alarm clock off, pull the covers over my head, and fall asleep within a few minutes. Alright, and with that, we are done with episode 2. We were able to go to the thingy, we were able to learn more about John the character, and we're finally getting to things that let us do stuff. Oh yeah, that's exciting. Well, 
Um, it was fun. I'm glad that we did this. I better go now though because I have loud roommates and they're being very, very loud at the moment. Okay, thank you for watching. I can't wait to the next episode. Hopefully everything will go right. Oh yeah.